Guys, a warm welcome to the guy who usually isn't up until I don't know, <laughs> the night owl, Jason Worth. Come on, give him, get up. Come here. Thank you very much. I'd, I'd first like to give a, a round of applause to Braintree for sponsoring this great event. Been a good friend of Chippy. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about pandas, and I'm going to title this Visual Pandas. And the reason being that there's a lot of pandas tutorials, particularly if you go on YouTube, you can see Wes give a bunch. And his are very kind of code heavy. And that's awesome. But if you come from Excel, like I come from an Excel background. I'm a very visual thinker. I'm used to thinking in tables. So sometimes when I'm learning pandas or, or going through things, it helps to have a visual understanding of what's going on. So I, I, there's a lot of information here that'll be redundant if you're a pandas ninja. But if you're new to the library and you're a visual thinker, this might give you a different way to kind of think about how the library works. So pandas is really built off of NumPy. Who here uses NumPy? Three, four, five, six, all right. So NumPy is an array-based storage. So you can have an array of numbers here. You can index into that and get those numbers out. It's very similar to um, a Python list. And you can have a 1D array, and you can also have a 2D array, right? So you can see things here are stacked by rows and columns. And you can get into those, and you can get columns out, you can get rows out. You can do different types of analyses on that. And if you see here, we can index into them based off of numbers, right? So give me the first row, give me the zeroth row, give me the zeroth column, things like that. So pandas basically takes that NumPy array and gives you a labeled index on that. So if you want value 14, how would you get that out? Anybody? B? Absolutely. And so when you have an index and you have a 2D array, you can think of having two indices, right? You can have one along the rows, one along the columns. So if you've used Excel, I mean, you can think about calling things in terms of the columns or calling things in terms of the rows. And so we, we can just apply labels to these things. And one of the nice things about pandas is that there's two different types of ways that you can work with it. You can work with it in a series, which is like a 1D array, or you can work with it in what's called a data frame, which is a 2D array. And so when you're thinking about it, you really want to think about it as a kind of dictionary, where you're going into things with keys, and you're going to pull out a bunch of values. And so pandas is really a dictionary-based NumPy. And so let's go through a couple of examples here. So if you have this data frame on the top, and you want to pull out column A, you can just index into it, and you get column A, and you get that bottom data frame out. So along the top, we have the column index. Along the left, we have the row index, the one, two, three, four. And now you can select multiple items as well. So you can see here that if you pull into the index of A and C, you're going to get out this data frame on the bottom, which is a two column. So now if you want to select more columns, you want to get different things out of your data set. What do you think will happen here? If, if we want to get columns B, C, and D, anyone have any guess what this call at the bottom will return? You're slicing a data frame B to D? You think that you'll get, who, who here, by a show of hands, thinks that we're going to get that data frame out? One, two, three, four. Who here thinks no? One person. Who here is uncertain? All right, we got a, a couple of people. So only one person says no. And you know what? It's not going to work. So one of the weird things that if you're coming to pandas from a beginner, things don't always really work the way that they might seem. And so we come into this, we've indexed into it in a few similar ways before, but when we want to index into it in a kind of Pythonic way that we're used to, it doesn't always work that way. So we can index into it with this i-axis, this index, right? And you can see that we're going to have a colon and then b, and we're going to slice all the way to D. And so now, pandas allows you to slice columns. It also allows you to slice rows. 
And so we just saw this before with our index. Now we're going to go from 2 to 4 along the rows. Okay? So if you wanted to get 1 to 3 out, you would just put that in there. You could put 2 in there and you just get that row out. And so you can also do kind of creative things in terms of slicing and getting intersections of things. So here we're getting an intersection of a row and a column. And you can see that we're going to pass into this data frame IX method. Right? We're going to pass into a, a list. The first one are the rows that we want. The second one are the columns that we want. And we're going to get back that middle data frame, those values of sixes and fours. And it's going to return back to us a data frame that has an index of B and C along the top and two and three along the rows. And you can do other creative slicing with things. So here, you can see that there's a very familiar kind of start, stop, and step method of slicing. And using the IX method, we can get out kind of creative shapes within our data. So along the rows, we're going to start at one. We're going to go to nine with a step value of three. And then along the columns, we're just going to take from five to eight. Now, one of the nice things about Pandas is how it handles missing data. So when you're working with a lot of data sets, you'll, you'll have holes in things, right? It'll kind of match up in one, but it won't necessarily match up in the other. And Pandas handles that for you automatically. And so we can take two series, which are one-dimensional arrays. We can stick them together into a data frame. And what we get here is we get one resulting data frame with missing values. Now, Tried to indicate those as white here. You can see series A is listed in the red, and series 2, or B, I guess, would be listed in the green. And the way you do that, it'll align them. I hope people can see that it's automatically joining on the C and D, because that's common to both sets. And so if you're working with data, like maybe you have customer data, and you have one list that has a set of customers, and you have another list that has a second set of customers, you can join those two with pandas, and it'll automatically intersect them where the two match up. And where they don't match up, it handles that flawlessly. It just puts nothing in there. It puts a, um, a NAND value. And there's a few different ways that you can create a, a series. In, in the first one, we've created it out of a dict. You can see on that last line of code that we're going to pass in a dictionary of series, the first one being labeled A, second one being labeled B. Here, we're going to do it, and we get a slightly different data frame result. Um, and so when we have these missing values, we can do creative things with them. We can fill them with values. You could pass in a default value of 0. You could pass in a default value of you know, minus 99999, if that's how your data works. Um, in the top, you can drop those. You can just completely erase them. And so it's nice to be able to take something that's missing and exclude it. Now, this is really cool. If you start with this data frame that's in the upper left, and say what you really want is on the right-hand side, right? You want labels 4, 5, 6, and 7 along the rows, and D, E, F, and G along the columns. That's kind of a tricky thing to get if you're just working um, with standard lists in Python. And so here, we can pass in an index. You can see along the right-hand side. And it's going to take that. It's going to grab that section of our data that we want, right? That lower right-hand corner, that 4 by 4 grid of cells. And then it's going to fill in missing values for all of the remaining cells that we don't have. And so you can get um, slices of data that you, know, you can fill in with values. Um, it's pretty creative. And so the basis of data frames and series are built along an index. And there's a few different types. Um, there's a standard index. There's what's called a multi-index, which, which I'll cover here. And then there's a few that I don't cover. There's an integer index. So instead of dealing with named labels, right, A, B, C, or customer names, or something like that, you can deal with just plain numbers. And then there's also date and times, if you're dealing with time series, right, where you want to slice out things based on years. And then there's a period index, 
where you can take ranges of things. You can take quarterlies, you can take uh, days, you can take weeks, things like that. And so the hierarchical index is really cool because up to now we've been dealing with a one-dimensional array, which is a series, a two-dimensional array, which is a data frame. And if we have a data frame with a hierarchical index, we can think of that as being an n-dimensional array. Pandas has a third data structure called a panel, hence kind of the name pandas. Um, and, and, and a panel is really meant for, say, three-dimensional or more. But when you're dealing with small data sets, um, 2D with a multi-index um, works fine. And so you can see here that we have a two-by-two two grid of data, right? But we have three different indices along the rows, and we have two different indices along uh, the columns. And so when we look at that, it can look like this. So, so say that, that you're dealing with different segmentation of customers, right? You have locations. Chicago might be a location. Detroit might be a location. You have different days of the week and different tests, right? Maybe you're a web developer and you're doing some kind of segmentation testing. So you can arrange your, your data here. And so a series with a one-dimensional, that's one-dimensional, it has a multi-index, is really a 2D. And we can see here on the right-hand side how those labels, how those indices would correspond to each other. And so when you get into what a multi-index is, it's an array of tuples. And this will, be, this will come handy later when you're doing things like group buys, which are going to give you back multi-indices and for selecting on higher dimensional uh, data. And so when we look into this, it can get kind of tricky, but you can see that we have um, on the levels, we have two different lists with two different indices. The first one being Python, right? The second one being uh, Ruby. And the second level, we have speed and lines. And it shows you on the labels how they're arranged. And because Pandas is built off of NumPy, it can do calculations, it can do slicing and selecting very, very fast. So now, if you have some data, how would you go about creating a multi-index? Well, you can simply just take in a data frame and pass into it a multi-index that you've defined with a list of values. So you can see here that we're going to have four um, separate items, right? You can think of these being like primary keys in a database. And then you could do it from tuples as well. Um, you can also do it straight within a constructor. So to create a multi-index from a series constructor, you're just going to do two different lists with inside of a list that creates your index. Now, Pandas does a lot of things for database-style joins. And so there's merging, there's joining, there's concatenation. And this works well for bringing different types of data together. So if you have two different data frames, say that you've brought in from separate CSV files or disparate sources, and you want to create one data frame so that you can work on them, you can merge them. And here, if you just call this pandas merge function and pass in two data frames, it'll give you a resulting data frame with those two joined. And what's important to note here is that they're going to be joined based on a similar column name. So both of the data frames that I have pictured have a column name, name, and obviously it's going to join on that column. And you can see that it's going to join where the, where the items in that column are equal. So each one has a B, each one has a C, and so our resultant data frame has that. Now, if your data doesn't quite match that ideal fit, you can choose different things to join on. So here, you can join on a left column. You can join on a right column that have different names. And you can see that, that it aligns them. It also matches up so that we get out the union of the data. Now, if you have something with an index, you can join on that as well, just by specifying that you want it to be the index. And you can do even combinations of things. You can join on both indices and on columns. And so if you're familiar wor with working in databases in SQL, right? You have outer joins, you have inner joins, you have left, you have right, things like that. Well, you can do similar stuff in pandas. So you can see here in our first 
data frame in the red, we have A, B, and C. And we're going to join it with one that's missing an A value. And if we choose the left, it's going to take that left one and choose all of the values from that and give us the resulting data frame with NANs in the missing spots. And so we can do similar stuff here with the right. You can see that it's taking all of the right values. You, you can do an outer where it's going to take both and give you back missing values for everything. So if you want to create a big list of stuff. Now, there's a similar one called join, which I, in my work, I mainly use concatenation, which I'll get to in a second, and merge. Join is useful because it allows you to take a list of things and pass it in uh, together. So we're taking one data frame, we're calling the join method on it, but we're passing it a list of subsequent data frames. So it's much more convenient uh, than using merge, where you'd have to use just two. And so concatenation. Concatenation is another way to um, take data from different sources and bring them uh, together. And so concatenation is basically a kind of gluing of things together. So if you have, say, 100 different CSV files, and you want to take segments of that and join them all together to create one resultant one, uh, concatenation is a good tool. And so normally when you do it, it's going to stack the rows and give you one long data frame. Now you can concatenate into a multi-index. So we've covered that before. And this might be useful if you're dealing with things with different lists or hierarchies and you want to give them some kind of ordering that makes sense, right? So you can pull it out later, later so you can manipulate it in different ways. So here, we're just going to concatenate together and we're going to give them key values. And then you can concatenate to expand it widthwise as well. And so here, you would use axis equals one. Now, sometimes if you're working with pandas and you're new and you're trying to join things together, it can be kind of confusing. I always think of axis one as being joining along the columns. One, to me, visually looks like a column. And so the same thing when you join along rows and you have a multi-index, you can generate the same thing out of, a, um, out of the columns. Now selecting. So we've covered some of that before. But selecting gets more interesting. Here's some of the different selection um, So you can, when you have a hierarchical index, right, and you want to uh, select, you, you can just call pi here. And we're going to get all of the performance values for maybe some testing done uh, for Python. And so here, so on the left-hand side, right, we're going to call, um, we're going to get Python out of that. And you can see on the bottom that we get two values, speed and line. Now, if we want to select only the speed values, right, and we want to get how that represents for Python and how that represents for Ruby, you might think that we just pass in speed in there. And that seems kind of logical. But that's not what happens. Pandas will blow up when you give that. So instead, there's an excess, what's called a cross slice. And cross slice allows you to select out the individual items from a level. So here, our category of speed, we can pass it into the cross slice, and we can call on it the level. Now, that level here, we've given a name, which is, say, category, or cat, short. And then we could also do it by an item, right? So the level is number one, which is um, moving from the left, which is zero, moving inward, that would be um, the first one. And so we can do the same thing for selecting all of the columns. So if you have a bunch of different data and, and you want to figure out, well, OK, give me all of the people who have done test two and give me what days of the week they've done it, it'll create a data frame based on that. So now, if we have this, we have this highly multi-dimensional data frame, right? We have Monday, Tuesday, and Tuesday could go up for maybe an infinite number of tests, right? Like maybe that was a really test-heavy day. We did a 1,000 tests. How would we select that out? 
Well, we can join these things together. So we can just call the column indexer, right, by taking Tuesday out of the data frame. That will actually slice off that kind of Monday portion, right? And then we're just going to take from the rows, give me Tuesday all the way to the end, or give me from the first value all the way to the end, excluding the zero value. And then last, there's the stack and the unstack. And these are really cool because they allow you to change the ordering of the indices. So we can turn a data frame into a series by calling stack on it. And we can also turn a series into a data frame. And we can switch them around. And so it'll basically reverse them in between. So when we call data frame stack and unstack, what we're doing is we're rotating the indices and we're rotating the other one back. And so this is a really kind of creative way to manipulate your data. So you might have a hierarchical index where you have a main value and then you have that separated out into days of the week or maybe months of the year. So I do a lot of stuff with finance. So we're dealing with, with, with calendar values, right? We want monthly returns for something. So say that you have a certain fund that you are looking at. You have a big data set, right? You're going to have along one axis, you're going to have the fund name. And then as a sub-index on that, you're going to have their monthly returns, right? So January, February, March, April. You could call unstack on that and just get as the rows, the fund name, and then along the columns, the monthly returns. So if you wanted to then see some analyses on that, you could just take that and say, well, give me all of the fund returns for the month of January or the month of December. And it's really, really easy to work with your data by flipping it around. So thank you very much. Any questions? Me? How do I actually use pandas? So I use pandas actually as, as a big database. So I'll, I'll pull information in from a CSV file. I'll join things together. I'll add things. I'll sum things. Um, there's a lot more to pandas than just what's covered here. Um, there's, there's, really nice, there's really nice features where um, you can take a series of data and just say multiply by five. It'll take all those values and in one line of code, give you um, that kind of scalar back. Um, and so when I'm, when I'm working with different data sets, right, so if I'm analyzing financial data, right, I can pull all of this in, multiply it by something, and get that value out. And then when I have that, I can output it as a CSV file, I can store it into a database, things like that. You seem like you were focused on quantitative data. You, know, you said you're doing financial reporting and stuff like that. I'm just curious, would these same techniques work with qualitative data, like textual databases? Could you, you know, the way you're slicing and dicing the data, would it have the same impact? Um, so the difference between working with quantitative or qualitative data. So I. I some of the examples I've given here are numbers, right? But instead of numbers, those could be strings. So, so pandas allows for strings, allows for numbers, allows for a lot of things. Um, and so a lot of the things that, that you'll work with are, in fact, other names of things, right? So you might have a certain uh, column where all of the names are your customer names, right? And they might be last name, comma, first name, right? Or it might be a telephone number, right? Which is numerical, but it's stored in a string, right? So you, you can work with strings, and then it's really easy. There's, there's a map function in pandas that I use a lot, where you can pass in a value, and um, you can separate your data out by just calling a function on that. Um, as I think about it now, that like, sounds really abstract. In, in, in practice, it's like really, really easy. So, so Pandas has a lot of import and export tools. Um, so it connects to like HDF5. It connects to uh, your standard databases. There's, there's a lot of import tools from the web. 
you want to bring, if you want to bring in things from, say, Yahoo Finance, um, there's ways to bring in things from just like, there's a, um, a, a data frame dot from clipboard. So say you want to analyze some kind of sports st statistics, right? You go to ESPN the day after the Bears play, and you want to see if, you know, Cutler should be benched or something, right? So, so you're going to copy a, a table out of Excel, and you can go into Pandas and choose, like, you know, the data frame from Clipboard. It'll just pull that in. So it has those types of imports, and it has those types of outports as well. You know, there's two CSV. You can outport, or sorry, you, you can export to different databases and things like that. How does it compare to R? So, so that, that question is always brought up every time that Pandas is mentioned. So, so Wes McKinney, the creator of Pandas, was, was working with R, and R has a data structure very similar to this, which he kind of copied. And so um, I would say it's pretty much, I don't want to say it's one-to-one. -one. I'm not an R user, and I'm not a MATLAB user. So I'm not really qualified to point out the holes. It's all in memory. Do we have one last question? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank you.